Welcome to Michael Potts Photography, the story behind the photograph. In this video, I would like to share with you a photograph of San Giorgio Maggiore taken at dawn with gondolas in the foreground. I've used a slow shutter speed to blur the gondolas as they bobble along the morning tide. I wanted to create a simple but structured image of a classic Venetian scene. In the background you see the church of San Giorgio Maggiore, probably one of the most beautiful and iconic churches in all of Venice. In the foreground we have a number of gondolas moored overnight, waiting for their gondolieries to arrive and start ferrying tourists around the city. It will cost you around 120 euros for a 30 minute ride on a gondola, but prices may change depending on the time of the year or even the time of the day. There are actually 400 registered craft in the city. In the past, there would have been many, many more. It's estimated that there were around about 10,000 gondolas in the 17th and 18th century. The flat bottom craft are uniquely suited to the shallow waters of the lagoon. Another unique characteristic is that they are asymmetrical. This helps a single oarsman manage them more efficiently. Standing on the stern, the oar is moved in a circular motion with the blade always under the surface. And it's this motion that propels the craft. I've actually tried to row a gondola and getting the technique right is very, very difficult. If you can do it correctly, a skillful gondolieri can glide the craft effortlessly across the water. The first recorded mention of gondolas was in 1094. The current design boats are about 11 meters long, 1.6 meters wide and weigh around 350 kilograms. They consist of 280 handcrafted pieces from eight different types of wood. All gondolas are painted black. This is because of a sumptuary law which was intended to restrict opulence. It would cost you about $40,000 to buy a gondola. If you wanted to be a gondolieri, you would need to log 400 hours in training as an apprentice. You will need to pass a comprehensive exam which covers the history of Venice, language skills and obviously prove that you can handle a gondola expertly. You will be required to wear either a blue or red striped top, a red neckchief, a wide brimmed straw hat and dark trousers. Potentially you could earn as much as 150,000 euros a year and you get to work in one of the most beautiful offices in the world. Every day you get to row past one of my favorite churches, San Giorgio Maggiore, the 16th century Benedictine church designed by Andrea Palladio. There has been a church on this island since 1790. The church was being rebuilt in 1566 under the direction of Palladio. Sadly, he died before it was completed and this beautiful white facade was only completed 30 years after his death in 1610. It's an amazing example of Renaissance style, harking back to classical Roman architecture, beautiful clean lines, proportions and a wonderful simplicity. The elegant Corinthian columns on the marble facade are striking against the blue of the lagoon. The marble comes from Istria, just across the Adriatic, and it was buildings like this that inspired the Palladian movement. Based on Palladio's ideas of symmetry, perspective and the principles of formal classical architecture, Palladianism became an essential style for state buildings from the White House to the Queen's House in Greenwich. All those buildings can trace their design heritage through this church. It's, it's such a strikingly beautiful church that Monet painted it five times. Probably the most famous iteration being San Giorgio Maggiore by Twilight, painted in 1908. It's a stunning image catching the iconic lagoon at sunset. You may remember this painting as the work of art that was stolen from the Met Gallery by billionaire Thomas Crown in the 1999 smash hit The Thomas Crown Affair. But I think I prefer the misty morning paintings he did in the same series, with the cool colours and the church emerging out of the mist into the lagoon. And I took my photograph at a similar time of day, albeit from a different location. If we go to the starting image, we can see it is quite different from where we ended up. I took this photograph with a Nikon D800, using a 24 to 70 millimeter lens set at f22 iso 200 but the key setting was that the shutter was open for a minute and a half to achieve that in daylight i used lee filters big stopper this is a 10 stop natural density filter and effectively what it is is a sheet of near black glass that you put in front of the lens and this blocks out a lot of the light and the reason my starting image is so dark is because I wanted to keep as much detail in the sky as possible. The first thing I did was to lighten the entire image. 
I reduce the highlights, I lighten some of the shadows, I increase the light areas and darken the dark areas. Effectively adjusting the contrast of the image without using the contrast slider. That way I feel you have more control. I sharpen the image using the texture tool, which makes everything just a little bit crisper. I then straightened the image and I cropped it, moving things around so I could bring the church of San Giorgio Maggiore into the center of the image. And I removed annoying things like the water bus bus stop and other inconvenient bits that were on the edges of the image. Because I shot this at f22, every bit of dust on the sensor is visible. In Lightroom, I use the despotting tool. This is quite a cool feature, and it's one that really helps you remove spots and dust from an image. By checking the Visualize Spots checkbox at the bottom of the tool, it inverts the image and grayscales it. It then highlights all the areas that appear to the program as dots. And that makes it very easy to find everything that shouldn't be there and remove it. In addition to this, I do zoom into the image and do a manual check looking for anything the tool has missed. I use the heel brush to remove any spots that are caused by dust on the sensor. After that, I made use of Lightroom's noise reduction tool. Even though my ISO was only 200, because the shutter was open for such a long time, there is a bit of noise, and this helped me smooth everything out. In this image, I'm really looking for a smooth finish. That's why I've, I've shot with a slow shutter speed to smooth the water surface, to smooth the sky, and this is another way to, to realize that intention. I made a further adjustment to the crop at this stage, making it a little bit tighter, and I adjusted the color balance of the image, bringing out the blues of the sky and the greens of the lagoon. The final step was to blur the background of San Giorgio Maggiore and the island around it. Again, because I'm using F22, everything is a little bit overly sharp, and I wanted to create some separation between the gondola posts and the background. And there you have my final image of a row of gondolas in Venice, on a misty morning in January. Thank you so much for joining me on that look into San Giorgio Maggiore. If you've enjoyed this, please do head over to my print store where you can see this image, as well as many others from Venice, all for sale as limited edition prints. And if you haven't yet, please do like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. Until the next one. Goodbye.